This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. How you doing? Gordo the Texar here. Welcome to another exciting and thrilling episode of Ibachi Talk. Pull up a chair, grab a libation, and join us. We're going to talk with Aaron Nakaoka. How you doing, Aaron? Nice yeah. to see you, bud. Yeah, thank you. Um, Aaron's a uh, local, I call you, uh, IT entrepreneur in town. You own two or three businesses, yes. last time I checked. Um, President Trinet Solutions, Aloha Tone. I'm nimble. And nimble, yeah. so you've got that, and you've and, and you've got some experience in the cryptocurrency world, which is what we're going to talk about today. So, um, first, just give me a little background on yourself, so our viewers know who you are and where you grew up and how you so, got where you are today. Um, I graduated from Hawaii Baptist Academy in the late '90s. Um, I went to UOP for college, uh, ma majored in business, came home. Worked for the family telecom business for a while. Um, in 2001, started Trinet Solutions as a ISP. 2005, started Loatone as a VoIP provider. Uh, 2011, we took over LavaNet yes. and still run LavaNet today. Uh, and then in 2015, we started a computer support company called Nimble Solutions. So the we've slowly been growing into different services that customers need right you've, and, and you've really taken on the small medium-sized business as a yeah, client base which is 98 percent of hawaii so. i know twenty-seven thousand small businesses in hawaii yeah. so um that's a great market to go after I, and and that's i i truly believe it's a space to be so anyway we, we you, you've been involved in cryptocurrencies i've done a couple of shows trying to explain how the blockchain works and so on and a lot of people are following up on Bitcoin now because it's been in the news right. and so on. So uh, how's your investments going? Uh, without giving numbers? Yeah. Uh, recently it went really well. Um, but, you know, we, it's a, it's a long-term game to see if the technology will actually do something in the real world. Right. right? I mean, it's fun right now mm. buying, I have some crypto kitties. Uh, we're doing a lot of fun things with it. Um, but... To see where it goes long term and really if it does change banking or if it changes the world, then that's really where the bet is, right? To yeah. See. The, te uh, the technology, the blockchain, the underlying technology right. that makes this, this work with the distributed ledger and such. Right. But you know, looking at Bitcoin in the past month, what it's done, it's, it's been up almost $18,000 last week. It's sixteen nine something like that today. <clears throat> Ethereum is up, Ripple is up, um, all the, I'll call them the market cap leaders have been having a pretty good run of late. So um, what are your thoughts on that? You think, again, like you said, you know, ha does this have legs? And we're not investment advisors, we're right. just, we're I think, just. I think you, if you look at it, a lot of it has a lot to do with just from beginning of this year, March or April, um, not many people were in it, right? right. And that still that increased the price. But after Thanksgiving with all the, the family dinners and all that and everyone jumping in, the Coinbase, that's going to make it go crazy, right? So, and we're only still at 1% of the population doing it. Right. right? So if 3% get there, it's just going to snowball. Yeah, it was amazing. 300,000 new accounts at Coinbase on the Monday after Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, like you said, sitting around the dinner and the, all the dinner of that. table conversations, right? Conversation, and everybody jumps in it. It would be interesting to find out how many people are in the stock market. Like, what yeah. percentage of the population? Are in the stock market. Right. I know. And I think Morgan Stanley, I think Coinbase now has more members than Morgan Stanley. So, it's an interesting, you know, thing. Now, no members from Hawaii, as we know, because our uh, illustrious... Yeah. Government, government officials know how to protect us from ourselves and don't allow them to do business here. We have a petition though. Yes. So if everyone can sign the petition to get to allow Coinbase to operate as a bank under the same banking rules as, as the regular banks, right. then we could get Coinbase in Hawaii. Right. And which they were willing to do. Right. They were willing. They actually were one of the exchanges that came forward, applied for their necessary uh, documents here. And the state put this onerous um, set of rules on them. Like, you have to keep 100% P 
fiat money. Which is impossible. Which is impossible, and the banks don't have to do it. Right. So that, 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 that just drove me insane. And, and, and um, as you know, we all moved our cryptocurrencies elsewhere. Right. And, um, and, and such. I say, me, I want to bring in a Bitcoin ATM, but I'm not going to comply with those rules. So why would I bring it in? Right. Um, they're just too onerous. So now the state loses the tax revenue on that. And the growth of development and all the businesses and... You know. And all the stuff that go by it. I know. It's just it's, it's insane. So, um, so as we know, you know, mining is the typical way of authenticating transactions in the, in the cryptocurrency right. world. So, um, but you and I can't mine anymore. Well, we can't mine the big valuable coins right now. We could mine smaller coins, right? Mm -hmm. And the two schools of thought are proof of stake and proof of work. So right. mining is proof of work, right? right? I, put, I put up a bunch of computers that solve a math problem or create a math pro problem to inject that block into the blockchain. Um, proof of stake doesn't require the, the amount of work, but it does require you to fund and say, like, if I make a mistake or if I inject something wrong into the blockchain, you can take my funds right, right as a network. So um, proof of stake is something that I personally liked because it didn't require a lot of um, CPU power. Right. And we could get into it for, um, well, depending on what coin you looked at, you could get into it for a, a, a very little amount. Right. So if you look at, so we'll go back to proof of work, which is the mining. Mm -hmm. And if you go to China, mm -hmm. Russia, the big players are got big computer centers that are mining these coins. Right. That's why and you and I can't get in there and compete with those. Yeah, we could put up something, but it would probably be not worth our time. Plus, we pay 32 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity, electricity. right? I mean, somewhere like Iceland doesn't pay for electricity or pays very little. Right. And that's why China put it there is in the border of Mongolia, because right. the electricity costs were so low. So that's proof of work. Now we go into the master node concept, right. which is um, uh, proof, just, of stake. Like, proof of stake. I right. just lost it. So proof of stake, where you and I can stand up our own computer. Correct. Our own node. <coughs> our right? own node. And, and then what we do is we fund the node. And the best part is the, the coins or the, the money doesn't actually leave my wallet. Right. right. Because of this, because this is a, is a trustless <coughs> network, I can say I have 15,000 Mementic coins in my wallet and the network can confirm that. Because right. the network confirms that, my node can do transactions and insert information into the blockchain and because of that, it gets a reward of a, per, a small percentage of every transaction. Right, so uh, right now, the reward for, let's say, Mementic master is nodes a coin. is a coin, right? Um, it was known as Pepe coin, but the, the reward is anywhere from like 60 to 80 percent, depending on the day. And that reward is when you authenticate right. proof of stake, the transactions that happen right. as other individuals are trading these coins. Correct. So as, they, as people are buying and selling, uh, we create a block or our, our server creates a block, mm -hmm. puts it into the blockchain. And if, if ever it's found to be that block is incorrect, or malicious, they will take our wallet. Right, and right. you lose whatever. Right, so in this scenario, we lose 15,000 coins. Coins, and whatever their value is at that point in time, you're, it's gone. It's gone, right. so if a, a, a Pepe coin is worth a dollar. Right, you um, lose $15,000. dollars $15, and you get to start all over again? Yeah, I mean, you know, <clears throat> there's no, because it's trustless, they don't know who you are. So right. you could just start another wallet, start another server. Um, and a lot of this is, the best part is you don't have to have even hardware, right? So all of our servers are on either our cloud or someone else's cloud right. as a very inexpensive uh, virtual private server. And it's running the software and the coins are yet on my desktop or in my hardware wallet or, or wherever. Or it could be in your, in your wallet, right. your mobile wallet. Um, uh, you could use Amazon Web Services to stand yes. this up or mm -hmm. any number of, of, the, of those right. types of providers. So this is an interesting concept to think about it, right? So 
Now I have the ability to stand up a system that will authenticate transactions that go through the master node proof of stake right. process. Can't do it for Bitcoin. They are right. proof of they're, work. They're purely pr proof of work right. until you know, the next hundred something years. And then at that point, they will be tip based only. Right. Right. So whatever, whatever you pay for your transaction to be entered into the blockchain will be what the, what the miners are going to be working for. Right. Right. Um, so it's, it's almost like a proof of stake, but it's, you know, there's no penalty if they in inject something different. Right? right. So proof of work, the only way to prove that you're not putting in bad information is that the next chain is longer and that the world is doing more than you. You're right? right. And that has to get authenticated after that. Right. And that it creates another transaction that gets injected into the blockchain. So, so much fun in this space. But you look, so, so we, we've seen them, the uh, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash. Right. Um, one that's pretty popular now and getting some good legs is Dash. Yep. And it's been around for a while, but that's proof of stake. Right, and so proof Dash is the the very first proof of stake coin. So the the master node at the time was I don't know a thousand bucks yep. or something ridiculous. To get a master node today, you need to have eight hundred thousand dollars USD yep. to buy enough coins to put it into your master node and run it. Right, right, but it does pay you back five percent. So if you you know if you have Eight hundred thousand, whatever five percent. I'm not really right. math. Yeah. So yeah, well, ten to eighty thousand, yeah. so forty thousand dollars. So a year, right? So but who's got sitting around on eight hundred thousand dollars to buy into the Dash Master Node complex? Correct. Right. Unless you form a hui and you know you get your five percent of whatever you put in. But right. what bank account is what bank account is giving you five percent? Right. Right. There's no savings account, no checking account that would give you five percent. And it's also appreciating. So, of course, the guy that bought the master node at a thousand bucks and is now sitting on seven hundred ninety-nine thousand right. dollars right. of profit is is ha happy. Yeah, and, and so we'll look at and what we'll, since we're talking about Dash, Dash right now is trading at eight hundred eighty-six bucks. It's gone up twenty-four percent in seven days. Right. So you're making five percent on return, but. That five percent is also growing. That uh, is also growing or losing, depending on what happens. Yeah, and this could all go to zero. It could all, all go to zero, zero tomorrow. Um, um, I can't see how, but um, I'll, I'll always say, um, uh, and we're going to talk about it in the second half. How do I can I turn this into real cash, right. or how can I buy things with it? Um, you know that we can with Bitcoin because I can convert Bitcoin to gift cards for now. Uh, for yeah. now. Until it goes to zero, too. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Um, and then I saw McDonald's announced they're going to take Bitcoin, Bitcoin starting next year. But who wants to use a Bitcoin right now when it's trading at sixteen nine? Right. Yeah, use a portion of it, obviously. But um, at sixteen thousand nine hundred dollars, it could go to fifty thousand. That Big Mac could have cost you a lot of money. Yeah, unless. Right. I mean, if you if you're going to use it transactionally, you don't want something to be skyrocketing. Right? Okay. Yeah, don't want it to be. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back and, and talk about how you built your created your master node. Okay. And then we'll talk about how we perceive we can move those cryptocurrencies into fiat dollars. Okay. And we think we've worked out some ways to do that. Anyway, this is Gordo the Tech Star. i got Aaron Nakao here. We're talking here about cryptocurrencies, one of my favorite subjects. We'll be back in about a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science. 
You care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational. So I hope to join you for likable science. You never know what's going to actually stay. Yeah, hey, aloha, Gordon the Tech Star here. Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here with Aaron Nakaoka, president of many companies here in town. And uh, we're talking about cryptocurrencies and we're going to talk about, ma about master nodes. So we're going to take it to the next level. So we talked about proof of work for for mining, we're talking proof of stake for master nodes. Okay, so you got into the master node. I'll call it business. When we started our first master node, April. April. So May April, -ish. April or May, you started uh, a master node with right. with a number of your your partners. Yeah. And um, I got invited to one of your events last week to to see how, what you guys are all doing. So so. But how do you do it? I mean, you can. So, the why is you want to start proving these? Well, the, so the, the transactions. True, the true why is, um, like any other, um, like any other asset. There's there's money to be made in buying and selling it and trading it, um, or there's money to be made in cultivating it. Okay. I'm a horrible trader. Everyone knows that. I just I'm too emotional. <laughs> I'll I'll react too quickly. So I buy things high, sell them low, which is horrible. Um, what the master node allowed me to do is make a return that was more than my money sitting in the bank. Five percent. Right. Three, so, two. Right. And I wanted to look for coins that were high volume, decent market cap, um, and that we knew the developer. So just word of mouth, uh, Pepe was our first, well actually Exclusive was our first one. Mm -hmm. Exclusive coin was the our coin, first master right. node. We made two of those. The ROI is good. It's not, it's not crypto good. Right. right. So it's like, it's like uh, volatility in the stock market. It's not crypto good, right? There's not enough, there's just not crazy swings. Um, so the Pepe, or what they've changed their name to Mementec now, was anywhere from 80 to 60%. And I think it's gonna come return. down, return. On your, as right. it comes down, as more master nodes join the network, because there's more people doing the work. Right, so the returns are gonna Right, go. which is fine, because then the network becomes more stable. So. There is, there are write-ups, and again, this is all. A lot of this is word of mouth. A lot of this is bootstrapping. A lot of it's a lot of forums. This is all new stuff, right? It's all new stuff. So there's no manual for it. Right. Um, people have written blogs on how to do it, and as software is evolving, it's evolving so quickly. The blog is no longer applicable, right? So I'm going to throw this thing at you because we're thinking out loud now. But is it, you know, I, I get this asked question. Well, is this legal? Well, the question is, is it illegal? I mean, how can it be be illegal? It's not gambling. I, it's it's. I mean, I I I make it similar to buying magic cards, right? Or trading pogs. Like, trading Remember pogs, pogs right? That years ago. Yeah. So I mean, that that got out of hand. Or beanie um, babies. Beanie babies have value, or even breaking, right? Uh, card breaking, right? If you go to the card stores, you can break a box, throw the whole box away just for one card, and sell the card back, right? right. So it's. <laughs> That's more gambling than this is. This is really, truly investment in a technology. Um, the, the knowledge base to create a master node, you need to know Linux, right? right? You need to know, and most of the master nodes are based on Ubuntu. I think just because it's the most stable and well-known, they went mm -hmm. that route. Right. Um, well, I don't say stable. It's the most well-known. It's the most well-known. Um, it's open source. Right. It's so, free 99. So all of this is open source, right? So all right. we do is we go to a virtual service provider or a virtual server provider. We buy a, a virtual server for five to 10 bucks. We throw some software on there. We load up our wallet and we link it. And then you start making 5%. You start making 5%. My goal was to... Go, keep going, keep going. No, so my goal was to stabilize the network for Pepe, especially, or I should call it Mementec, and create as many master nodes as I personally could, right? But that comes with the cost, right? right? And as the cost of the Mementec goes up, so does my cost, right? So like the internet or like any other thinking that we do, uh, we wanted to scale it globally, right? So the, the barrier to entry into getting a master node is Linux knowledge. Right. Right. You've got to know that. Because everyone could have cash. Right? A or lot you of, can buy in to one that already exists. If you can find someone to sell you one. Yeah, who will right. sell you into a, in, right. into someone, a master someone node. Right. Someone could create a business model where I'm making 30%, I'll sell you 15% for 20%, yeah, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you can buy so many tokens or be part, like Dash, like you said, right. 800,000 to buy into the master node. So the reason why I've never <laughs> sold 
interest in my master nodes is because then I don't know if I become a broker in Hawaii and yeah, they come now we're all me. stepping on these other territories, right? right? So, so globally, what we've done is we've released software that will build you a master node with no Linux knowledge. Yeah, I saw that. So all you have to do is click a button, you get a master node, you go to the website, you fill in your private key because there is still the linking of the wallet to the master node. Right. And you're in business. That's it. Now, what wallet? Now, do you use a particular um, wallet that that? So you use the wallet for that coin. For that coin. Right. So, so the Pep, you know, the Mementic has its wallet. Uh, Zen, Zen, Zen Cash has its wallet, Mementic has its wallet, wallet, Exclusive has its wallet. Right. And so what I do is I house my wallets on virtual desktops that are only dedicated to that wallet. Right, you don't want to be putting it on the stuff that you're right. taking Right, so I mean, in case I'm, let's say I get a virus someday, I don't want my computer to crash. So I actually put it on, well, so I have a wallet on Nimble Cloud and I have a wallet on Paperspace. Mm -hmm. I can take snapshots daily of my of my whole computer so even if it were to get a virus or crypto locked or whatever which would be ironic um yeah <laughs> i i can go back to a restored date right? right and at least get back to where you were right and so what we also like our code or our script runs on every on any virtual provider as long as you can throw up an ubuntu box right and not even a virtual provider you could run it on your desktop at home what about a chrome stick what about uh, you as know, long as it can uh, run uh, Ubuntu? Yeah. So right. an Intel, an Intel, right? An Intel um, uh, stick, which is a PC on a stick. Right. Um, as long as I can run Ubuntu on that particular correct device, you I can could have a master. I could node. turn that into a master node, and it hardly uses any yeah. uh, so electricity. You want a static IP address? You want a public static IP address? Right. Which um, you got to pay for. Because yeah, for, for if you're a residential, you're gonna have to move to a business to a business account, which is why, like just for the cost of a static I, a IP address in Hawaii, you can get a virtual provider whole server with the static IP address in the mainland for the same one. So for I could same. go to any one of those those third party providers and stand it up there and not worry about static IP paying for it, right? And all of those kinds of things. Right. So we posted we posted the code on CryptoHawaii.com, and all they have to do is click a button. They get the node set up for them on the Linux backend. Right. They link the wallet. They fund their wallet and link it, and they're they're and, making five percent. And that's it. So when, so so, um, but what's that cost me to do that? Nothing. It's free. It's nothing. Right. So I want people to do it because it helps stabilize the network. The the the, uh, the I'll call it the mining network, but the proof of stake network. Correct. It, cre it, it creates stability within Mementec or Pepecoin, whatever we want to call it, right? So it also generates percentage back for them. Right, and the more people that get involved in that, the more authenticity it gives to right. the coins. Now, these are not in initial coin offerings. This is, we're not going to get into that. This right. is just, just a, a different way. Okay, so here I am. I'm sitting on, you know, $1,000. Thousand dollars, well, an equivalent of a thousand U.S. dollars in whatever particular coin it is, and I want to get it to U.S. cash. Now, so, how would we how would we go about doing that? So, in your wallet, um, you're going to stake your wallet for fifteen thousand Mementic coins. Right. Right. So the fifteen thousand Mementic coins have ranged in this last year from six cents to a dollar thirty. Right. And you can look at the graphs. And again, we're not making financial decisions for no. you, um, but. In your wallet, you have 15,000 coins. Every three hours or so, you'll get five more coins, right? From your wallet, you take, you have to, you have to make sure that 15, original 15,000 doesn't get touched. Right. Right, but you can transfer out of your wallet every month, every day, what, whatever term you want, into an exchange, right? That exchange, you can then use to buy either a more common currency, like which was Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, right? which then you can transfer to, well, hopefully Coinbase someday, or another, like Kraken, right? and you can then transfer that to your to bank, your bank account. account. So so let's go back and walk through that. So um, that, that, is a, that is one way of taking these coins, and, and these coins get their value based on the people that are willing to buy in, like they were buying Pogs or right. Beanie Babies, Right, and then, and then hoping that, that that would increase in value and they'd sell those back. Right, and there's also applications that are built on Mementic that will prove that I own a meme, right? That's the whole point of why it was built. Um, but in the near future, Mementic will be traded on an exchange directly to like the Korean won, 
Okay. Because we have to think this is not a, this is not a U.S. only thing. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a, it's a form global. of currency. It's a global it's a global issue, right? right. So, Mementic will be traded directly to Korean won soon. So from your wallet, you would dump it to your exchange, and boom, you're in Korean won. Right. right. So hopefully, uh, Kraken or Coinbase, you know, again, eventually, coin if if Mementic gets big enough, Coinbase will take it on. Right. And hopefully, if Coinbase gets big enough, Hawaii will allow it. Right. Then from my wallet, I transfer to Coinbase. Coinbase, boom, I have USD. Right. And you got USD. But, you know, you, we also have relatives that live on the mainland. So I can, uh, a trusted relative, have them open up an account. Right. And I can just transfer um, uh, coins to them. Right. And they, they, in turn, can go to Coinbase. And so, like, um, Kraken, because Kraken filed in Hawaii as a... Bro stock broker, stock broker. They're allowed, right. right? Coinbase came in as a bank, as a so bank. that's where they got them. So you, you get your you get your Pepe to or your Mementic to Kraken, right. buy LTC, send your LTC to um, your or, Litecoin, or your Light or your Litecoin. You can sell your Litecoin on Kraken, right? And then Kraken can dump it into your first line bank account, right? And the way it goes, oh, it goes. Yeah, and there's there's other exchanges that that I use that I can that I can turn around and dash. Uh, one of the exchanges I use, Dash, just got recognized by that exchange. Right. So now that Dash is recognized by direct. that exchange, I can take that Dash coin, those Dash coins that I have, tr trade them for cash, and move them right into my bank account here in Hawaii. Right. So that's the full circle. The hardest part is getting from a Hawaii bank account into Kraken because Kraken right. is so overloaded right now. Right. So you use Ubit, Gemini, all those other exchanges. Right. Which, Uphold. And then you got to find an exchange that sells the masternode coins to create the to masternode. To create the masternode. But if you hop through those hoops, you'll get a, a an ROI that you're not going to get anywhere else. Yeah, you're not going to get anywhere else. So anyway, we we actually burned through the whole show and so in in this very short period of time. So we tried to make it so that you can understand what we're talking about here, the cryptocurrencies and the, and the mining like the Bitcoins. Right. Now there's a, a spin-off of that. I won't call, well, I'll call it a spin-off, which is a new way of looking at proofs of stake, right. which is the master knows the concepts there. Um, we're not providing any financial advice. We're just telling you how the world is changing because of this, yeah. this blockchain technology, which I equate to when the Netscape browser first came out. Netscape browser first came out in the internet. Then next, you know, Microsoft came in with theirs. You know, and, and all different flavors, and Firefox, and then Dolphin, and all these different browsers just grew up over, over the time. Tor, as you want to get deeper into those other black side of the web. So this, to me, is just another evolving right. of what's going on in this particularly fun industry. I'm planning to do this about once a month now, or so we're going to do updates on cryptocurrencies, because I'm getting a lot of calls on it. Uh, so I think we'll, we'll continue to do that. But Aaron, thanks a lot. I hope you understand what we're kind of going through here. Um, and make sure you follow, you can look at my previous episodes where I talk about blockchain and how it works. I didn't give you the heads up on this, but at the end of every show, I have a tagline. It's okay. called, how you doing? So anyway, like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three, how you, how doing? you doing? 